Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In the last two days, I've been using Pop OS and I want to give you my impressions about it. Let's get started. So here we go. I downloaded the ISO and I booted up the machine from here. So let's hit enter here to install Pop OS. It's gonna take a moment to boot up the system. And we are now on the desktop and there you go we can now install pop os so let's go ahead let's select english here and click next now for the locales united states is fine so i'll just hit select and i have to select here my keyboard layout so i'll scroll down here and until i find mine and then click select now we have a choice here whether to clean install pop os or a custom so by custom here we can create resize or otherwise manage partition manually but in my case i'm going to go this time for the clean install so i'll just click the first option here and click clean install now we need to select a drive here i have only one right now so i'll just select this one and click erase and install so it asks me now if i want to encrypt the disk but i don't need to do this right now so i'll just click don't encrypt and now it's going to install pop os so it's going to take a moment to do this and i'll be back when it's done and the installation is now done so it was very fast now we can click restart device and the system is now going to boot and we are on the welcome screen so let's click next and my keyboard here is fine so i'll just click next and for the location services i let this the default and click next now, I need to select my time zone. Paris is not actually correct, so I'll type in in the box Zurich. This is my time zone right now. And then click Next. I don't need to connect to online accounts right now, so I'll just click Skip. And now I can create my user account, so I'll type in my name here. And I'll pick my username and click Next. Choose my password, retype it, and then click Next. And there you go, the setup is complete, so we can click start using Pop OS. And we are now on the desktop. So first things first, let's adjust the screen resolution here. I'll go to display settings and I'll choose my resolution and select the scale to 200% and click apply. Keep the changes and close the window and now we are ready to go. So let's right click on the desktop here and click settings and go down to the about section. And let's have a look at the info here. So we have GNOME version 3.361, which belongs to the family of the 3.36 version with the new lock screen and performance improvement, which is nice to have. And what is nice in Pop OS here is also that you have an OS upgrade tab here and we can upgrade the system directly from here when needed. So right now we don't have any update, but this would be one place to come to update your system beside a terminal. So let's scroll up here and go under the appearance tab. And you can see here we have the background we can choose from. There are some nice backgrounds here. Let's pick one. Let's pick this desert here. And then we have also an appearance tab here where we can choose our light menu or our dark menu. So right now I have dark selected and that's fine with me. So I'll let this as it is, but it's a very nice and comfortable option to have right here. So let's close this up. Now, if you need more tweaking on GNOME, the GNOME tweak tool is of course available in the Pop OS shop. So if you go here to the shop, and we search for tweaks. You can see it is right here. It's not installed by default, but it's really a click just to install it. So let's close this up. Now I can't demonstrate this because I don't have an hybrid system and I don't have an NVIDIA card anyway, but in Pop OS 2004, the system can now switch between integrated card and your dedicated GPU automatically. You'll have a setting right here, which will allow you to set the option for that. And as I said, I can unfortunately not demonstrate this, but it's a very nice feature to have. And if you need more info on that, you can visit the Pop OS website. You'll find every information about this there. So what is really great on Pop OS is the ability of tiling windows. If you click on this icon here, we can activate this option by switching this on. And now you can see if I click here, we have some shortcuts that we can view. So if we click on view all, a window pops up which tells us which are the shortcut keys for Pop OS 2004. By the way, keyboard shortcuts are a little bit different than they were in the previous version, so you might want to have a look at these to see where the differences are. So for example, one of the shortcuts is the super key, which might be your Windows key if you have a Windows keyboard, and the T key. So if I hit now super key and T, you can see the terminal snaps into place because I have the tiling window option selected. 
And this is really nicely done in Pop! OS. Let's hit again super key and T to open a new terminal and you can see it snaps into place. Now you can see the keyboard shortcuts here, for example, to switch focus between windows, you would use the super key and the arrow keys. So let me switch over here, for example, to this page and I go back to the terminal here and go back to the previous terminal above. So let me close the keyboard shortcut page here and pull up the browser by hitting super B. And Firefox is pre-installed on Pop! OS. This is version 75 and you can see it pops into place immediately. And we can switch focus of the windows by hitting the super key and the arrow keys. For example, the browser right now is selected, but if I hit the super key and the bottom arrow, the terminal is going to be selected. And if I move to the right, the other terminal will be selected. So it's a very functional desktop. So if you like to work with tiling windows, definitely have a look at Pop! OS and you can learn its keyboard shortcuts. It's a really nice way to work. We can also activate the show active int, which puts a slight border around the window here, just to have more focus on the window you're working on, which is a very nice touch. Let's switch off the tiling windows now. And let's try to move some of these windows in other workspaces. So let's go to the activities menu here and let's move this terminal here to the second workspace. And let's go back to our browser and let's close the terminal here. And let's put the browser in the middle. So we could move easily this browser into the second workspace by hitting super key and the shift key and moving with the down arrow. You can see we are now on the second workspace and we can release the keys and we have now Firefox also in the second workspace. So Pop! OS is really nice to use. It has a lot of keyboard shortcuts and this can improve your workflow greatly if you know how to use these shortcuts. And I find Pop! OS is an excellent system and it allows you for a very good window management. So let's close this up and let's close the terminal up. Now, another thing that I would like to show you is the Pop! OS shop again. So let's pull it up shortly. As Pop! OS has now integrated Flatpak support directly into the Pop! Shop. So let's search, for example, for Spotify. And we have it right here. So if you click on the icon here, what is really nice on Pop! OS is that they tell you which package you are installing. So in this case, we have the Debian package here. And if I click on the arrow here, there is also a Flatpak version. So you have always the choice whether you want to install a Debian package or a Flatpak, which I find a really handy feature and very user friendly. So on Pop! OS Shop, you can download packages from the repositories, you can download Flatpaks, and of course, you can also download from the Ubuntu repositories. So I find this is a very nice thing to give users a choice of which kind of package they want to install. So let's close the window up and let's pull up the search bar here shortly and type in firmware. So we have a firmware setting here in the settings. So let's have a look at it. And this is also new in Pop! OS. If we click on this tab here, we have the possibility to manage and update our firmware automatically. So you don't have to have a System76 laptop for this to work. It will work on any device. And I find this also very nicely integrated in the settings manager here. So let's close this up. Now let's pull up a terminal. Let's go to the activities here and type in terminal. And let me increase the font sizes here and type in uname dash r and hit enter. So Pop! OS 2004 is based on the kernel 5.4. This is the same LTS kernel that Ubuntu is using. And this is great to have. So we can close this up. And let's have a look at the software that comes default with Pop! OS. Let's go to the activity tab here. And as you can see, it's very light on software. We have LibreOffice installed. We can check the version. For example, if we open up LibreOffice Writer. Let's click OK here. And as you can see here, it says we are running version 6.4. Let's have a look at it about LibreOffice. This is version 6.4.2.2. It's not the latest one, but it's almost the latest one. I think the latest one is now 6.4.3.2. Let's close this up. But other than that, Pop! OS comes with a very limited selection of software by default. And this is not necessarily a bad thing because you have a very nice Pop! OS store at your disposal where you can download tons of applications as a flat packs, as a Debian packages or in the Ubuntu repositories. Let's open up here the files application and you can see also the design of Pop! OS is slightly different than what we have in Ubuntu. They use a different kind of font, there is a different kind of iconography here and a different kind of colors as well. Of course, this is always a matter of personal preference. I find this scheme is also very nice to work with. It's very easy on the eyes and it's very easy to read as well. And let's close this up. So the last thing I'd like to show you is the launcher. So if I press the super key and the backslash key, we have a launcher opening up in the middle of the screen. So we can launch apps from here. Let's launch our calculator and hit enter. And there you go. Now let's open up another application. So let's hit again the same key 
And this time, let's launch LibreOffice and hit enter. It's really that fast. Now, if we turn on our tiling window here, by just switching this on, the windows fall into place and you can start working with tiling windows. Again, this is a really great feature. Both the combination also of the launcher and the tiling windows is very powerful. So I've been using Pop! OS for the last two days and I've been really impressed with its speed, its flexibility, and it was really a joy to use. So if you like tiling windows and you want to give Pop! OS a try, definitely do so and let me know what you think about it. So this is my take on Pop! OS. I definitely recommend you to give it a try. They integrated so many things, the launcher, the tiling windows are so well done. I really enjoyed using this distribution. I want to remind you guys on the 9th of May we have the live stream coming up at 2 p.m. Central European time and the second stream will be at 8 p.m. Central European time. As I said before, I'm also working on the new Arch Linux series. It's gonna come up in a few days. I first need to produce the first three videos and then we are ready to go. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you in the next one.